tour is free. All you have to do is get there. The space is limited, so we encourage you if you're interested in and uh, coming down to, to let us know as, a, as the tours fill up quickly. And we, we only have a number of seats that we can uh, provide on these tours. So we highly recommend it from uh, the aspect of seeing the country and experiencing it firsthand. Uh, but, you know, these are our words. What we'd like to do now is talk to some people who have actually been on the tour, our clients, and listen in their own words as to uh, what they think about this entire situation. So if I could first uh, speak with Art and Sue, are, are you on the line? Uh, yes, we are. We're both on the line. All right. Well, welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Fine. Yep. All right. Tell us a little bit about your experience and how do you found out about Nicaragua, how you found out about the, 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 the opportunity that we're presenting here, what was kind of some of the things that swayed your decision to actually go forward with it, and what your overall experience was like. Uh, well, this is Art, and we've been going to Nicaragua for about five years, and we've seen it go from... Uh, on the main highways, you know, encountering cattle and uh, human-powered carts to everybody owning pickup trucks and, uh, you know, 60 miles an hour. So we, we've we seen progress in Nicaragua in five years. Uh, so we're not shy about investing in Nicaragua. You know, it's, it's, it's encouraging to see... Uh, some uh, a country like Nicaragua that's been so devastated by a revolution uh, starting to pick up. It's a good time, good time to invest. Uh, we've been looking to, vers to diversify across uh, multiple countries, and this provides that. We've been actually looking for timber investments for a while. Uh, most of what we found is REITs, REITs uh, in the U.S., uh, but that doesn't give us the international diversity. Uh, we like the people in Nicaragua. They, uh, it's the thing that keeps us coming back. Uh, what what impressed you most about the what impressed you most about the country and the plantation? Um, I, I tell you, what I was most impressed with with the plantation uh, was the organization. I didn't know quite what to expect going there, but uh, I was very impressed with the entire team, the caliber of the people that you hire. Um, it, it made me very confident that you had a sustainable business and that it would be there um, in years to come, which, because the space is, it's a, it's a long-term business. And um, it, 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 by the end of the trip, we were absolutely convinced that this is what we wanted to invest in, and we haven't changed our mind since. I can't say that we haven't changed our mind on some other investments that, that we've made um, internationally. Let me ask Fantastic. you, um, you know, if, if someone's listening on the call tonight and they're still kind of concerned about that word Nicaragua, uh, you know, you and Arch, you've been going for five years, what would you say to someone, how would they start out um, doing their research? What are the kinds of things that uh, you could help them with? Well, uh, as far as uh, starting the research, I would say uh, uh, a planned tour, uh, like Alex offers, is a is a, a very good way to go. It is offers a kind of a very uh, vacation uh, as well as investment insight. Uh, but like I say, we've seen progress being made. And uh, I don't think it's going to be stopped. I think it's uh, just beginning. So we're we're very happy to see the country emerge, you know, from kind of a gloomy past into uh, opportunity. And, what you just and, said our sales, and our sales team, would you say we're easy to get along with? Are we pushy salespeople? How, do, how what's your interaction been like with our sales force? Well, Alex, everybody but you is fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest. <laughs> just kidding. No, just kidding. No, I, no actually, it's the contrary. I would say you're not, not pushy at all. It's, um, 
it, it's you're very responsive. Uh, every question we've had all the way along um, has been answered. Uh, you, you, you know, we, Art and I are really busy people. We we got two big jobs, and we, we sometimes we're not on the ball with taking care of stuff. You'd be very patient. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I, I've been I'm very impressed with the entire team. Thank you very much for that. Interesting that you said, uh, Art or Sue, that you know, how it was a combination of really a vacation and, a, and an investment tour, and that tr it truly is. It's an enjoyable time because not only do we see plantations and landscape, but we share dinners and lunches and great conversation, and you, you come home with a lot more friends than you started out with. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. We've, we've, we've met, <clears throat> made friends on the tour, and, um, and, and yeah, it really is a vacation. It, it, you're, yeah. you're, you're not... Um, yeah, it's, it's, I've never been on one of those um, timeshare condo weekend things that they advertise, but uh, I can imagine it's, it's about a 180 from that. And if you're if you're really lucky, Craig will get on his guitar and sing some songs. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys were there for that. That's right. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was very impromptu. Well, thank you so much. Let's let's go to John. John, are you on the line? Yes, I am. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, once again, just share with us a little bit about your experience uh, as, as, as much as you can from start to finish. Well, I found out about Madaris Futuro from Dave Drummond, uh, who's currently in Belize. Um, I called Alex and spoke with him over the phone a number of times. I asked Alex for some references, and he um, checked with people who were willing to speak with me and I called them up and spoke with them and uh, so my wife and I were uh, comfortable with the idea of investing in Nicaragua uh, we have looked at, at also investing in uh, Costa Rica so we're familiar with uh, Central America and, and comfortable with that um, I agree with Art and Sue that uh, certainly the the area has uh, demonstrated progress economically and um, uh, like Sue, I was impressed with the people. Um, I think uh, Norma would say that uh, the that Alex and Ken and, uh, and others are respectful of people. Uh, she likes that, uh, appreciates that. Um, I was impressed that the people and the systems are in place to continue the work, even if Alex and Ken decide to retire or move on, uh, although I don't think they will. Um, I was also impressed with the longevity of the key staff. Uh, they they keep good people there, and they don't go off elsewhere. Uh, to me, that's usually a sign of a good company, that people want to stay there and work for them. And um, uh, I was also impressed that uh, Madaris Futuro has uh, favor with the local government. Um, you guys... Uh, uh, work well with them. They appreciate you. You can see that uh, as evidenced by the plaques in certain areas and, and the, the, the library there um, that you guys uh, built, uh, as well as the, uh, all the, the school desk. Uh, so uh, we were just impressed to see how well uh, Madera's Futuro fits in to San Juan del Sur and, and how the people uh, res have responded. So what would you say was a... Uh, um, I'm so, I'm so glad that you got, guys uh, got a chance to go. I know you had, um, you know, a lot of great questions for me initially, um, and uh, it was a, an educational uh, process that uh, you had to go through. With regards to what you ended up, uh, obviously you don't want to get personal on this, but um, um, with regards to what you ended up deciding for your for your own personal sort of financial goals, um, if someone is thinking about this space, if thinking about agriculture, uh, you went through this, um, how would you uh, recommend someone take a look at it? Well, I agree with what Art said earlier. Um, it helps to um, talk with people who've worked with Mandaris Futuro uh, and then to go and see for yourself. Um, I, I think there's something to be said about uh, uh, meeting people and, and um, um, seeing the other staff that you don't talk with on the phone, uh, seeing how they interact with the, uh, the senior staff, that to me is very telling. Uh, uh, and um, 
uh, I think you, you, you make a very persuasive argument as to the, the uh, value of having uh, non-traditional uh, asset allocation by uh, looking at timberland. And what's nice about Madaris Futuro uh, is that you allow uh, the non-millionaire to um, have access to timberland. And you must uh, have some Spanish in your background because you're one of about three of our several clients that can actually pronounce Madeiras Futuro um, <laughs> correctly, and uh, I thank you for that. But we did uh, recently get smart. When we named the company several years ago, we named it a Spanish name, uh, Wood being Madeiras and Futuro being Future. I remember being at a uh, convention somewhere in the U.S. Uh, about a year ago, and I did a speech, and, and, and as I walked out of the room, I heard this nice uh, old lady say to her husband, wasn't that man a nice man? And he gave a nice speech. What was the name of his firm again? And so that's why we've uh, tried to move a little bit uh, recently to Precious Timber. Um, uh, and so you'll find that they were staying Madeiras Futuro, but uh, our website and everything uh, is going to move to, uh, to Precious Timber. So that one probably uh, even I can pronounce. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, John. Bud and Marcelin, are you on the line? Yes, we are, Craig. All right. I hope I'm pronouncing your name. Is it Marcelin? Is that correct? It's correct. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, you guys are right now in Panama. Is that correct? Yes, I first came here in 2001. This is our permanent residence. We own no property wow. in the U.S. Well, share with us a little bit of, of your story, how you got involved with this project. Marceline and I have been looking for a long time for some way to, um, I'll use the word diversify, but really to, uh, maybe it's more correct to say, internationalize ourselves so that we're not totally inside the U.S. Uh, we are retirees, and we believe that part of what Alex talked about earlier is, is coming. We just don't know when or the degree of the pain that's going to be experienced. But we had never been able to find a way to move IRA assets out of the U.S. until by a fluke of circumstances last September we became aware of a meeting in, in January and that's when we met Dave Drummond and uh, Marcelin met Alex um, Wilson there at a meeting in, in Cancun in Mexico and we looked at each other and said, this is the answer. Why, why did it take all these years to finally find the answer? Uh, we started moving forward and then um, being fairly cautious, um, uh, we, I wanted to see it myself. And so uh, John, who, who spoke earlier, uh, said part of his time there was a vacation. Our, ours was not a vacation. Although we did some sightseeing, we wanted to, uh, because we live in Panama, we wanted to be able to see what we were getting into, not just the Madeira's Futuro part of it, um, but also the country and the people. What about the infrastructure? Um, how stable is the, the government? Uh, those kinds of things. And so we wanted to see it ourselves. And so we started moving forward. but. Uh, the, the big thing was in, in the May 16, 17 uh, discovery tour that we did. Um, I came away with a feeling of it's a family. It's a long-term view. Um, Alex asked, uh, I think it was John earlier in, the, in this webinar, about the hard sell aspect and the marketing. I don't see, I, I don't recall that I ever saw any marketing while I was there at San Juan del Sur. <laughs> because it's so low key. They answered every question. They took care of every, every aspect that, that needed to be taken care of. We met um, Ken, um, Ken Ross's wife, Lily. She's a real asset for this um, undertaking. And we just came away with this is a long-term, very stable, look at it and make it, make it work. And so we truly understand the, the people, planet, and profits in that order. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet now and let Marcelin say what she wants to say. Greg, I would just say that we first started learning about precious timber in Cancun last January, have been doing a lot of due diligence, checking into 
looking for things that would fit our need, where we would put our retirement money to protect it. And I would say that precious timber and particularly the coconut aspect that we decided on, this investment opportunity is everything that we hoped for and certainly better than we expected. And I say that because the team members that we met in Nicaragua, the whole sales force, we consider them good people. We thought they were very honest, hardworking, hard in what they did. We trusted them. We felt good and we also felt secure about the country. We didn't have any incident in Nicaragua that would cause us alarm or cause us to have any fear at all. I certainly would classify us as the average investor, probably a little more cautious, a little more detailed than the average person who has millions to invest. But we were well pleased, happy as we can be with what we're doing. I would suggest this opportunity for anybody. Well, we really Thank appreciate you so much, your, uh, guys, uh, everyone. Thank you, for, uh, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I'll speak for Ken as well and Lily. Um, this is the kind of um, this is you know obviously we hear this a lot and um, we are always moved um, emotionally moved by uh, the power of your words. This is how we set this up. This isn't something that we thought of to sell to others. Uh, Ken and I have a lot of skin in this game. We've been down in this country for a long, long time. Uh, we, we actually are the beneficiaries uh, way more so than our employees. Yes, we've done some things uh, for the locals. Yes, we've put some programs together. And of course, anyone would. We're not, any, we're not special by any stretch of the imagination. Anyone that was exposed to it uh, when we were, would have done the same thing, I think. But one of the things that Ken and I often talk about and also pray about is how fortunate we, we, ha we have been in being able to impact the many lives that we have, but also how lucky we are because of the things that they have taught us in our attempt to teach them. So um, I just have one question for Bud and Marcelin. Um, and then we'll move on to Craig and what Craig has to say about finishing up the webinar here. But uh, you guys um, obviously moved. You've uprooted from the U.S. You've gone to Central America. Um, if you could, just maybe a minute or two in your own words uh, for those um, people that are thinking that uh, this region uh, is still as it was in the 70s. Um, maybe you could just share, um, you know, your retirees. You obviously feel safe in this part of the world. If you could just uh, add maybe one or two more uh, tidbits as to uh, why someone should take the leap, get on a plane, and go experience it. To me, it's just a real adventure. Bud and I are world travelers. We've traveled to Libya, Egypt, Africa, all of the places that you might think most people would never even consider going to. We're still traveling, and we're still looking for other investments outside the U.S. This is not a scary thing at all. To me, it's an adventure in life and you need to look at the opportunity and enjoy it. To add to what Marceline just said, um, there, are some, there are some negatives, but one of the things that we see very, very distinctly different about living as, as an international uh, couple is that family is much more important in Latin cultures. Uh, sometimes we get frustrated when we go to the grocery store and can't find um, vanilla. Uh, vanilla extract, for example, or uh, things that people take for granted in the U.S., it gets kind of frustrating, and the manana syndrome um, is very much alive, not only in Panama, but also in, in Nicaragua, all, all the Latin countries, um, Central and, and South America. 
but it's not scary. Um, if you can open up and allow yourself to slow down and not, not seek or demand instant gratification, you will begin to see a lot more about what life is about. Um, it's people caring about people rather than um, how quickly can I get enough money to go buy a new BMW or whatever. Um, it, it's just very rewarding in very fundamental ways about what life really is rather than, than the, the plastic life of, of a more cosmopolitan world. With that, I think I should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Alex, if I could, I, I'd like you to talk just briefly for a moment about the COVID.